Hello! Welcome to my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes, that you find some inspiration along the way. It is episode 71, and we are in the middle of October, year 2021. If you are new here, a warm welcome, and if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad to have this space to share with you all my creative makes and my thoughts. My hope is that as you watch these, maybe you feel inclined to respond in conversation by um, writing in the comments below, or if you wish to have a less public, maybe, way of conversing, you are welcome to find me on Instagram at edible.thoughts.makes and we can continue the conversation there via direct message or also I will often share a post on my grid relating to um, a published episode and a lot of people like to comment in that section below um, to continue the conversation. So let's... Uh, talk about the weather. It is so cloudy and uh, has been raining off and on, so lighting is a little bit mm, iffy today. Uh, the leaves are so beautiful. They're like swirling around in the wind and they're yellow and brown and red and all the shades in between and we just love it. We are having an unseasonably warm fall this year as you know, many of our seasons have been kind of a little uh, different <laughs> this year. So we are still above average for our temperatures and we have not had uh, frost yet. And that means that we get to enjoy the flowers from our garden a little bit longer until there is a frost. I think up farther north they have had some frost risk but we haven't had it yet and it looks like in the 10 day forecast I don't see anything going down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit there are some like low 40s and high 30s so we shall see I know it's coming um, we have a risk or oh, not risk sorry I should say chance of snow anywhere from October through May and our risk of frost isn't usually over until middle of May, so it's it's coming any time now. Uh, we expect it here. So, um, but the nasturtiums are still blooming. The foxgloves seem to ha have had like a second wind, and they are going. They're just blooming all over the place. Um, but foxglove, you're not supposed to cut because it is super toxic. Um, so we don't have foxglove cut in the house. Uh, what else? The autumn joy which I think is a succulent, but it's outdoors. Like the leaves are super waxy and it is a perennial and they come back year after year. Um, and their blooms are kind of like a dark mauve and they're tiny, tiny flowers. Sometimes I do cut those and bring them in. And if I put them in water, they just start rooting. So I didn't cut any of those today. I have, I think these are bachelor buttons. These purple ones, the name's kind of escaping me right now, but I think those are the bachelor buttons. The bunnies ate a ton of them. So we had to kind of fence around it. Um, for them to kind of get a get a second chance. So I think those are the bachelor buttons. And then I believe these are strawberry yarrow. These are these tiny little red flowers with the yellow on the ins inside. And then for this bouquet, I picked a bunch of the creamy peachy zinnias and a few orange ones for a pop there. And then these the greenery here is from our um, boxwood evergreen shrubbery. Um, I like the height and the green is just so pretty. Um, and then some snapdragons. I'm actually surprised the snapdragons are still around. I I thought those were mostly in like July and August, maybe even September, but it's October and they're still blooming and I'm not complaining. So it is so beautiful to have fresh cut flowers all the time. It's amazing. And we will miss them dearly in the winter, so we are soaking it up while it lasts. Um... What did I else today? So, in this video, I have closed captioning provided, and uh, there will be occasionally text or images on the screen, and I try to point it out when I insert them, but I don't always remember. And if I'm correcting myself, then 
um, the text will often be on the screen or it'll be in the description box below this video. Sometimes it's like show more or read more or something like that. Um, and there will be links provided in the description box to information that I talk about here, like links to designers, makers, things like that. And then I have a separate section that goes to Ravelry project pages for any of the projects that I talk about, should you wish to look for information there. Today I have two finished projects to share with you. I'm so excited about them. And I do have a few active works in progress to share with you as well. So, what do you have in your beverage today? What do you have in your beverage? What do you have in your mug? What beverage do you have in your mug? <laughs> I am having decaf black tea. It's hot cinnamon black tea and it is so good. So the first project I'd like to share with you is the one that I am wearing. That is the Pixie Pullover. And I will stand up a little bit so you can see it. So, Mine is very modified. So I knit the size one, which um, I believe is a finished chest circumference of 34 and a half inches, giving me about two and a half inches of positive ease. Um, let me look it up here. Well, anyway, it's from the second collection of the Farmer's Daughter Fibers book. This one is the Wisp Collection. And every pattern in here is just absolutely beautiful and it's styled so, so like romantically. And so this particular design was, um, the designer is Wei Qian and the name of the pullover, Pixie, I will also link to a website that I found that helps with, um, pronunciation of the Blackfoot language. This is the Blackfoot word for bird. Um, I'm going to read to you a little bit about the um, design. So this design is inspired by northern ravens that dance and play in the arctic skies of the designer's home. Birds winging through the sky remind us that our connection to place is anchored by the land and the sky with no boundaries. Now this pattern comes in 10 sizes and I um, knit the first size. The recommended needles are US 4 or 3.5 millimeter needles and the yarn is a um, sport? Yeah, it recommends using a sport weight yarn and then a lace weight yarn for the contrast color. Now I went <laughs> all over the place as far as modifications go for this project. Um, I, I really wanted to use these colors. They just kind of jumped out at me. And this is yarn that I've had. The brown main color yarn I picked up at Yarn Con in Chicago year 2019. I took my two kids with me to Yarn Con. My husband had a conference in Chicago. And so, um, it was so much fun. I mean, there were tons of people, which seems really hard to imagine right now being you know still in a pandemic um, I just can't imagine myself being in large crowds of people right now especially with my two children but it was so much fun and the yarn is the grinning gargoyle and they were having a sale on certain skeins and this one happened to be I think $12 12 US dollars or something like that I'm, I'm not remembering exactly but I think it was something around there so I had grabbed two of this color and then like one that was more gold and yellow and then one that was like a really dark brown I didn't have a specific plan I thought I might make a shawl but um, the blend is an 80 10 10 alpaca silk cashmere and it's a single ply, um, 250 yards for 100 grams, and this particular color is called Shiny Penny. And then my contrast color, I paired it with the Yarn Collective Rivoli Sport, and that's a 35-35-30 Merino Alpaca Silk. And that comes out to 273 yards for 100 grams. And that colorway is Renee Storm. So, I'm already going a little off by using a DK and a sport instead of a sport and a lace weight. <laughs> and um, 
I did not do a gauge swatch because I cast on kind of on a whim. It was beginning of August and I just really wanted to make this, so I said I'm going to make this. <laughs> and um, I figured I could probably eke it out with the yardage that I had if I made some modifications, like making it short sleeve versus long sleeve, making it slightly cropped versus longer. However, I didn't take into account that the gauge was going to be actually uh, denser than some of the other DK weight or sport weight sweaters that I had knit. So in my mind, I was thinking, oh yeah, I can do it, but I think I was also thinking that I would be knitting it on like a US 7 or US 8 per se, which would give me a looser gauge, which would then like increase my mileage with the yarn that I had, if that makes sense. So since it's denser, I need more yarn for a smaller, for like the same amount of, of you know, space, if that makes sense. So then I, you know, had to do a little more math. Um, but also, I changed up the neckline a little. I added some ribbing, and then it was too wide. So then I had a, I did a crochet, like slip stitch edging with my um, contrast color, which I actually really like. And it brought in the neckline a lot. So there's a tip if your necklines are ever too wide. Um, crochet a slip stitch edge and it does like tighten it up so there's no like give really but I didn't need it because it was it was way too wide on me now this is not probably what the pattern intended for right because if you just follow the pattern you might not have this issue but because I added the ribbing you know that drew it out a little um, I followed the chart as written um, and it had longer floats, so if you don't like catching your floats, you will probably have to catch your floats. Um, but it's a very short yoke, which is nice because it gives you a little room to play with as far as yoke depth goes. Um, and then I decided that knitting the DK weight yarn on US 4s was hurting my hands, it was just too dense of a gauge, so I changed to US 5. But if you're going to go up a needle size, it's going to change your gauge, right? So. I finished the yoke and then I changed my needle size and then I decided to start doing a bunch of decreases all the way down the sides. So I think I decreased like every fifth round maybe so that it would um, pull it in a little bit and then I stopped once my measurement got to where my original chest circumference measurement was supposed to be and it turned out really well. I ended up with I think like one gram of yarn left. Um, I'll show you. Here you go. That is all the yarn that I have remaining of the two skeins that I started out with. I have plenty of the blue, of course, because I started out with a lot of that, and that one I wasn't worried about. It was the main color that I was worried about. Um, yeah, so I did some math, and I figured how many grams it took me per round, and then with my gauge, how many more inches could I get out of the, whatever I had left, and kind of went from there. So a scale can be your best friend when you are playing yarn chicken, and I do this a lot. If you've watched previous episodes, you know that I rely on my kitchen scale or my digital scale a lot because I'm often playing yarn chicken. Um, when I got to the bottom, I did do the recommended color work chart on the bottom, but then I also added ribbing again, and then I knit one round in my contrast color before binding off knitwise. I used a bigger needle on my right hand so that uh, the bind off wouldn't be too tight. And I really like how it turned out. My The top of my hip bone is right here, and the sweater goes maybe like an inch past that. So it's perfect. I am wearing it here with a long skirt. Stand up here, although well, then you can't see the sweater, so that's not very helpful. But I'm wearing it with a long skirt, and the skirt goes up to maybe my belly button, and so it sits perfectly right where I like it. Now for the sleeves, I um, knew I would rather have more in the body length than I would in the sleeves for this one. So what I did was after I split for the sleeves, when I picked back up, I used the contrast color, I knit ribbing. And then I was gonna leave it at that, but my sleeves flared a little bit. So I did an inverted box pleat and I used the contrast color to sew that pleat down. So the pleat is very sturdy, it's not going anywhere. 
and I did it to both sides and I really like that cute little detail I think it's super fun now I oh I was gonna talk about the color inspiration so I was inspired by Rene Magritte the painter who does these paintings with like it looks like cutouts of the sky it's um or you know the famous painting with the bowler hat and the green apple and they have ones with birds actually in the sky and the cutout is the sky and so how appropriate for this colorway to be called Renee Storm and this line of colors from the Rivoli sport collection um, are all named after artists so that kind of worked out really well for me here and I just love the blue um, the kind of turquoisey sky blue with the coppery brown. I feel like it's very autumnal. Um, there's a pop. It's, I don't know, I just really like this combination. So I think overall, let's see, I ended up with a 34 inch circumference. My length from armpit to the bottom hem is 12 inches and the full length is 19 inches. There are no short rows in the back to raise the neck, but I feel like because this neckline is pretty close after I slip stitched the neckline, um, that it doesn't bother me that there's no, um, that there aren't short rows in the back to raise the back. I can turn around and maybe show you. It's not that low on the back, so it doesn't bother me. It's very comfortable. So yeah, this is my new pullover. Okay, the next finished project I'd like to share with you is a pair of finished socks. These are my Halloween socks. Here's the other one. I don't know why I only grabbed one sock blocker, but I did. <laughs> so here are my pair of finished socks. I used self-striping yarn that I purchased from a friend's D-stash. And another friend let me know what this mystery sock yarn was. It is Zombies Walk at Midnight by Rock and String Creations. Um, it's appropriately named for a pair of Halloween socks. I had called them my Halloween socks before I even knew the name, so uh, that's good naming, right? <laughs> and the mini is a miscellaneous mini, but I thought it matched really well. Um, it kind of went with the moody theme of this. I used the Sock Exploration Shadow Wrap Heel by Denise of Earth Tones Girl for the heel and I really like it. If you've been watching you might know that I've made many many pairs of socks using that heel method um, and it's very versatile in that you can use it with any cast on size. Yes, any cast on size. I think the pattern has three listed in there but I've used it for smaller, for something in between and it works. So. I used a US1 2.25 millimeter needle. I used Chowgu 9 inch circulars because that is my preferred needle for stockinette vanilla socks. And I don't have to change it out for the heel either. The only time I change it out to Magic Loop is when I get down to the toes. Um, I did start these at the same color stripe so that they would have the same sequence throughout and they finished beautifully. Shadow wrap heel, heel I inserted um, between two color stripes. Um, what else to say about this? I don't think I have much to say about it. I cast on 60 stitches for this pair for um, kind of finer fingering weight socks like that are 463 yards for 100 grams. I like the cast on of 60 stitches. If it's like a heavier fingering weight yarn, I usually do 56 stitch cast on. Um, I have an eight inch circumference foot, nine and a quarter foot length, 
and I wear a US 7 women's shoe size. I like providing that information because I think if you are trying to figure out what cast on is best for you, sometimes it, may, sometimes it can be helpful to have a reference point. Now everybody's gauge is different, so 56 stitches on me may not fit the same as 56 stitches on you, even if we have the same size feet. Also, what's comfort level? How much negative ease do you like or not? Um, so you just have to play around with that. I've just found that these numbers work well for me. So I ended up using, let's see, about 58 grams of the main color and the heel used up about four and a half grams total. So these are plenty long and very comfortable on me. So I have plenty of yarn remaining um, to make another pair of socks uh, my kids have already claimed the remaining yarn to make them Halloween socks, so I will be doing that. I think I might even be able to make them each a pair, depending on how I do the contrast color for like maybe the cuff or the heel or the toe, or also depending on how long they want your, their socks to be. So I think, let's see, how much yarn do I have left? Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. I have 52 grams of yarn left. So that's plenty to make a pair of socks for me, so I know I can make socks for them. So definitely if I use contrast colors, I can make two pairs of socks, but we shall see how that goes. Halloween is coming up. Um, I'm not sure if I'll make them each a pair of Halloween socks in the next two weeks, so maybe I'll just make the older one the socks because the younger one ends up with all of the socks that I make the older one. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. So speaking of socks for my older one, she is eight and I have started a new pair of socks for her in this project bag that I sewed up. Um, I don't think, no, I did not start these in the last episode. So these are a new cast on and I am using yarn that I have remaining from a pair of socks that I knit for myself by my dear friend Shobha of Serendipitous Wool. And here's the yarn divided up. This colorway is Fearless, and it is on her 80% Superwash Merino 20% Nylon base, which is 400 yards for 100 grams. I just love Shoba's colors. They are so vibrant, and they knit up beautifully, and they've washed well. Um, so I'm starting out with 44 grams of this yarn, and I am using my Peekaboo Cuff tutorial which I will um, link to in one of the corners above here and I knit it a little bit longer than the one in that tutorial because I wanted a um, deeper cuff so I cast on um, I did an older Norwegian cast on of 52 stitches now I typically do 48 stitches for her on a US one and a half her foot circumference is seven inches um, and I have been knitting a three by one ribbed sock for her just because there's a little more give in there but I felt like doing just stockinette here so I went up by four stitches. I am using US 1 2.25 millimeter Chowgu needles um, in the nine inch circumference and so I cast on 52 stitches with a contrast color and this beautiful red that leans slightly orange is the colorway Let's Picnic by, dyed by Colleen of Little Lionhead Knits and it is yarn remaining from many projects that I have made um, and this one is an MCN base which is uh, 80... is that 80-10-10? 80% Superwash Merino, 10% Cashmere, 10% Nylon I mean that adds up to 100. I think it's 80 10 10. <laughs> anyway, so I had like nine, nine grams to start and um, I had like half a gram left when I finished. So I started with the contrast color and I knit 20 rounds. Then I broke that, joined the main color, and with the main color I knit 16 rounds. And then I folded the wrong sides together, knit to my cast on edge and again um, the tutorial will have been linked um, up in one of the corners here so you can reference that how I do that and then I just continue knitting stockinette with the main color and I really like how the variegation in the colors is micro striping you always get this like blue line in between the red orange yellow colors and I just love how it's turning out. It reminds me of those clear blue autumn skies and then you have your beautiful red and yellow leaves. 
um, yeah, I really, I really like it. And I don't know how long I'm making the leg yet. I need to do some measurements just to, or not measurements, but calculations to see how far this yarn will take me. I am not worried about running out because I can always put in a contrast color for the heel. I can always put in a contrast color for the toe. And if I run out before the toe section starts, I'll just knit a different color <laughs> for that section. It'll just be like a longer toe looking section. I think I have a good, um, bright blue that would work pretty well for the toe so I might go that route we shall see if I have enough then I'll just go on the whole thing and just finish up this yarn um, but if I don't yeah contrast color will come to the rescue okay the next uh, work in progress I'd like to share is a pair of socks I'm knitting for myself and I did say the wrong colorway last time sorry I noted it in the description box but I did not catch it in the time that I was recording um, what had happened is my ball band I think got switched so I said that it was called falling leaves but it's called it's fall um, it's a self striping DK weight yarn in 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the dyer is sock -ternal. Here is the label for you to see. And I just noticed the label says it's four ply fingering weight, but it's definitely DK. So this is the DK weight um, self striping yarn. It's fall. And it is knitting up beautifully. So I'll show you my balls of yarn here. It came in a gobstopper and then I wound it into two 50 gram balls. Now afterwards the dyer contacted me and let me know that if I wanted to in the future, if I purchase two 50 gram balls, they will start at the same color stripe and it costs the same as if I bought a full skein. So um, that would be a great <laughs> idea next time if I wanted to start at the same spot. So these are my two and the colors are so beautiful and so I did not end up having them start in the same spot because I think it's is it six different color stripes I was having a hard time dividing it up evenly if I wanted them to start at the same color stripe so then I ended up just having them um, in reverse order from each other so that it, I wouldn't have to worry about that not that there's something to worry about but I feel like it was gonna be potentially off enough that it would bother me so we're just gonna go all off right so this is where I'm at. I'm knitting them cuffed down on US 3 3.25 millimeter Chowgu needles 9 inch circulars and I did a long uh, bit of 2x2 two two, knit 2 purl 2 ribbing on the top and I wanted to go through four stripes of the colors which I think came out to be like almost 24 rounds. I basically just knit until that color finished and then if I needed to shift my beginning of round um, marker then I shifted it so this one starts on the gold stripe and this one starts on the green stripe and then I like to use these light bulb stitch markers on the side to mark every 10 rounds and that way I know my socks will be the same length you could just look at the striping if you really wanted to but I like having that extra assurance of having the uh, light bulb stitch markers marking every 10 rounds and I always do that with my socks versus measuring with a ruler because stretching can always affect how long or short something is. But if I just count the rounds, that's always going to be the same no matter how much it stretches. So I don't know how long I'm going to make this leg. I also can't remember if I did made some calculations on here. I think I did on how many rounds per stripe. I can't remember, but that will help me look at my gauge and with that I can calculate you know how many grams I need for the foot so then I know how long I might want to knit the leg in order to use up as much of the yarn as possible if that's what I'm going for which I don't know if that's what I'm going for right now or not um, I am just enjoying the blissful stockinette of self striping yarn I just I love it's it's like magic you know you keep knitting and then you're like oh it's another color oh it's another color it's so exciting I love that oh the stitch markers I have on here are made by uh, Maria who is woolen forest on Instagram and her Etsy shop is forest charm Let's see if this will show up here she has these beautiful gemstones that are paired 
with a charm. This one has an oak leaf. And that is in a project bag that I sewed up here. It's a patchwork one. I think I showed it maybe two episodes ago. Um, it has a moth in the center, and the moth is going upwards on this side and downwards on the other side. And it's so autumnal, and it makes me so happy, and I just love it. And I have um, a linen interior on this one, which is the same linen as the skirt that I was wearing in the last episode. Um, and it'll probably be in a lot of other bags as well. And then my boxed bottom, I have a maroon canvas on the bottom. Oh, I just adore it. Okay, the next work in progress I'd like to share with you is one that I have been working on for a year off and on. Um, I started this in October 2020. And I remember saying on Instagram that I really had no business casting on a fingering weight color work sweater when I was 100% distance learning with my kids. And um, yeah, but I did it anyway because it's what I felt like doing. And so what, right? Like if it didn't work out, I could just rip it out. Um, and if I wanted to put it aside for a little while, I could. So I did it anyway. <laughs> I did not do a gauge swatch. Um, I'm not really quite sure why, probably because I just felt like doing it anyway, and so I did. Um, this is the Hyphenated Sweater by Jamie Hoffman. And I knit the size two, which, gave, which gives me, I think, four to five inches of positive ease. And I... Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. Dun, 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 dun. Here's a close up. It's beautiful, right? Ah, I'm so glad I stuck with it. I knew I was going to stick with it. I just wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. So it is knit on pretty small needles. The ribbing calls for, I think, US one and a half or two and a half millimeter needles. I don't think I had like the right size at the time, so I used US two or 2.75 millimeter for the ribbing. And then the main fabric is knit in US three, 3.25 millimeter needles. And I've been knitting a lot of um, looser gauge uh, pullovers against, I guess, so I've been knitting looser gauge pullovers since I started this one, and I'm not sure if I would have done it had I realized that I would be knitting a fingering weight sweater in a, on US 3 needles at the time. But again, like I said, I did it anyway. <laughs> so I did not change needle size for the yoke. I knit my color work using two hands, so continental in the left where I hold my dominant yarn, so the yarn I want to pop out more, which is usually my contrast color. Right hand I hold the main yarn. And I used, for the contrast color here, it's a gradient yarn in 463 yards for 100 grams called Pretty Thoughts, dyed by Christina of Teal Torch Knits. There was a creamier color to start, but I cut that out because I wanted it to start on this like creamy peachy color, and then it melted into like a light pink and then into a lavender and I didn't get to like the last color it goes into like a deeper purple so you can see on this ball here that you have the lavender and then you have a little peak of a dusty lavender popping through and then there's a dark purple in inside now I was banking on not getting to the dark purple because it would blend in probably too much with my brown main color. My brown main color can lean a little purple in some areas. I'm not sure if it'll show through on this yarn cake, but there are some darker areas that lean a little bit purpley brown. And so yeah, it, it worked out really well. Oh. I love it. It is so pretty. I did a light steam blocking just to make sure that my floats um, are okay. There are some really long floats in this, so if you don't like catching 
um, floats. This might not be the pattern for you, or it could be a great learning experience. <laughs> um, I did have several times where I had to rip back because I didn't do my increase rounds correctly. And then because the color work chart is actually pretty extensive, um, like it's not just like a four something repeat. You know how sometimes it's like um, 2MC, 2CC, 2MC, 2CC, or whatever, MC main color, CC contrast color. It is not like that. So there is, um, you have to really focus, which is also why I was like, why did I start this um, at, at a time when I probably didn't have time to focus? Um, but I did it, and I finished, and I love, I mean, I finished the yoke, which is the part that you have to think the most about. So the rest is easy peasy. I also omitted their, like, the um, texture. There's like these pearl bumps in it. I just didn't want to have to think about that, so I didn't do it um, because I felt like if I missed placed one of the little sections that it would bother me and I don't like ripping stuff out, so I just wasn't going to deal with it. So I just have blissful stockinette for the rest of this project. I will make the body as long as I want it to be. Um, I have plenty of yarn for this one, so I'm not playing yarn chicken, so I might as well make it as long as I want. Um, and same for the sleeves. You do have options on the sleeve. I think there's balloon sleeves or tapered sleeves. And I think, I don't know what I'm going to do. I usually, I think, go the more balloon sleeve route so that I don't have to think about decreases like as I go on a tapered sleeve. But I don't know. I, again, I think I have enough yarn, so I, I think I'll be okay on that part. I'm doing a th something a little bit different um, as far as alternating skeins. So with a lot of hand-dyed yarns or yarns just with some variation, um, you can, you don't have to, you can alternate your skeins so that you even out the color distribution a little bit more. Um, and there are different ways to do it. There's one way where you get to the beginning of the round and then you just like twist your yarns and then drop the one you were knitting with, pick up the one that you will be knitting with, and then continue doing it that way. Another way is helical method, where you get to three stitches before your next yarn, and you slip those three from right to left, sorry, you slip those three from left to right needle, and then you start knitting with that new yarn, which would have been that last stitch that you slipped, and then you keep going around and around, so it kind of like chases each other. Um, I feel like that one is great when it's just stockinette. It can be a little tricky if you have any patterning in there or you have like uh, increases, decreases, or whatever. So I don't recommend it for that. I'm sure you could do it. Actually, I'm not sure. I don't really know if you can do it or not. I've not tried it. I don't want to mess with that. Um, but I'm trying something a little different this time. So instead of twisting or doing helical method, what I am doing, which I can't really show you right now because I'm not at that section, but instead of changing it behind, like on the wrong side, I am bringing the yarn that I am not using to the front, and then the yarn that was in the front, I'm bringing to the back, and I knit around, and once I get to the beginning of round again, I will take the yarn that's in the front, move it to the back, and then the one I'm not going to use, bring it to the front. And so basically I'm carrying the yarn still up, but there won't be a twist or line on the wrong side, and there won't be one on the right side either. So it hides it. I, I still haven't, I don't think I'm far enough along to really see how it's being hidden but it's hidden. Have you tried this method? It's new to me, um, but I'm excited about it because it means I'm not doing helical knitting, which sometimes if I get in the groove, I'll like knit kind of past where I was supposed to slip or, s and it's, it's not really annoying. It's just, it's just what it is. Um, and I don't know, sometimes it's nice to try something different. So we'll see how that goes. So I don't think I have anything else to say about this. I just love it and I think it's beautiful and I'm looking forward to wearing it whenever it gets finished. Again, no deadline. You can, I mean, this has been on my needles for a year now. Um, I would love to have it done, you know, by the end of the year, but no rush. 
no reason to put deadlines on myself for things that don't really need deadlines because extra stress is not needed. Um, there's enough things to stress about in the world. Uh, a project that I started on a whim that I don't have to have done doesn't have to have a deadline. So there you go. Last work in progress. This one is in another project bag that I sewed. I just adore this one. It is so moody and so autumnal and it's black. It's when I just really wanted a black and purple bag. So I made a black and purple bag. There's purple linen on the bottom and black and gold fawn on the main print. It's so pretty. It's like a tote bag style, but also drawstring. And the inside is gray with birds on it. Okay, so in this project bag is my half and half triangles wrap number two. The first wrap I called autumnal winter because it's my version of like a wintry wrap in the sense of colors. Um, and this one is called deep autumn. I am using this gorgeous chestnut red and this is Pearl Soho's Linen Quill, 50% Highland Wool, 35% Alpaca, 15% Linen. And then the second color is, uh, is it Dark Iris? Yes, Dark Iris. And the iris has different colors in the purple, which I just love. You can see kind of reds in there. And because they're darker colors, the linen that doesn't take the dye makes it look really heathered and I just love these colors together. So I have started it um, and per previous episode, I talked kind of about my math on this. So if you want more details, I would go to that episode and I'll link it in one of the corners above here. I am using two skeins of each color and casting on a number in between the large and the small size. It is a free pattern on Pearl Soho's website. The large size casts on 260 stitches. The small size casts on 190 stitches. I'm casting on 230 stitches and we'll see where I go with that. Um, I am using the called for needle size, which is a US three. I have a lot of projects on US three right now, don't I? Um, and this is the beginning of it. I'm maybe about an inch or so in. The beginning is longer because you cast on all your stitches first and then you will work less and less stitches as you go because of how the short rows are for the first triangle. Um, this is a ongoing long-term project so you may see it in the episodes from time to time if there is a significant of progress to show you. Uh, the needles I'm using on this one are the Addy Turbos which is a new needle to me. I actually never used them before but I wanted something that wasn't as pointy as the Chowgu needles that I had been using only because it is the exact same um, like movement all the way through and though I don't always like here I'll show you I don't always point down mm -mm, something looks funny here oh, here we go it just got loose so I don't always like push down on my needle point I often just like lift it off however sometimes I do and if I were to like keep pushing down on the chowgo needles it just becomes a little uncomfortable because they're so sharp whereas these ones the Addies these are not the um, Addy Turbo Rockets. I think the Rockets are supposed to be pointier. These are just the Addy Turbos which are not as pointy and the blunter tip um, right now is just feeling more comfortable on my hands. Um, I don't find this yarn splitty so that's not an issue for me. Um, I just thought I would change it up and see if this would be more comfortable. Um, I do have it in a DPN case that I sewed up previously. I don't use DPNs very often, but I do use them from time to time. Um, and this just keeps everything from getting tangled in my bag here. So that is an ongoing project. Oh, and I have a Tuft Woolens hand balm in here. 
This one is Black Orchid and it's vanilla scented. Kind of a fresher vanilla scent. Oh, I love it. Um, my fingers get really cracked and then sometimes there's paper cuts and it's just, I don't want it snagging my yarn and I don't want my hands to feel so dry. I feel like this yarn feels drier in hand compared to like a superwash merino and I just need that extra, um, extra, what do you call it? Extra, extra something. <laughs> Let's just call it that. A little bit of extra something. Oh, and it smells so good. And as you're knitting, your fabric smells like it too. And a little extra something. Okay, I think that is it for today. I feel like I had a bunch of thoughts of things that I wanted to share with you today, but because I didn't write them down, at the moment I can't remember anything. <laughs> um, I don't know if that happens to you, but yeah, I feel like sometimes I have like all these thoughts. There, like if you, if there were thought bubbles coming out of my head, you would just see pop, 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 like thought bubbles everywhere. And then I could like turn a corner or go down the stairs or do something different. And then all of a sudden, pop, 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 they're all gone. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I thought I had something to talk about or to ask you or something, but yeah, I, I forgot. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you are doing well. Are you doing anything for like the changing of the season, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere? Do you have any like special things that you do um, for yourself or with your family or, you know, things like that? We've done all the apple picking already, so that is done here. Sometimes we go to a pumpkin patch. We tried growing our own pumpkins this year, but they just didn't take, I think the soil where we planted the seeds it just wasn't great soil, um, but we might try again next year. I mean, st something still came out. It just wasn't like your, uh, like a Cinderella pumpkin. Like nothing, nothing magically came out and turned into a big pumpkin, um, and that's okay. But yeah, so I hope you are doing really well. I hope you are taking good care of yourself and your loved ones. And cheers to being creative. I will talk to you next time. Bye.